Hey, how are you? This is Pietro from The Independence and from the limited edition. What is The Independence? It's your broadcast about the beautiful stories of the world of independent watchmaking. We've been doing this relentlessly since uh, 2015, so it's been already nine years in terms of promoting independent watchmaking. And this uh, YouTube channel is catching some attention and we're really, really grateful for that, as you seem to appreciate us bringing the hottest and the, and the, you know the most surprising stories in the world of independent watchmaking today is no exception and actually today is a great day because we are unveiling a, a pair of watchmakers young watchmakers that have had their formation in the, the highest school of watchmaking in germany and they are now here to uh, propose their own watchmaking they've been doing this uh, uh, low profile so far uh, but today we are willing to unveil what's happened this far and even more interestingly, probably what are the developments for the future. So together with my partner in crime, uh, Johnny McElleron, our editor and uh, independent voice uh, from the world of independent watchmaking, we will have the pleasure of introducing this pair of watchmakers that Johnny they feel it feels like uh, a defining moment uh, that we're living in terms of these two watchmakers. The potential they're showing is absolutely incredible. Ciao, Pietro. Yeah, good to be back after a very busy non stop week in Geneva at Watches and Wonders 2024. And really good to get back in the saddle here. Um, yes, you are absolutely right. We have got a fantastic story to tell today and it is usually whenever i'm preparing the images pietro it's of photographs of uh, finished articles and the looking at all the finishing etc that has already been completed this time we are so far ahead of the game that we are mostly going to be looking at renders today and the images the live images that we will be looking at are from the atelier of the components and of the the finishing that has been carried out on a molecular scale from a pair of absolutely inspirational young talents who have joined forces, having both served lengthy time at Elanga and Sun, no less, and have decided to cut their own path and to come out and establish their own brand. And definitely very very excited for the future of, of this young brand which is called Kalinish Clays and that is named after the two founders and the two main actors in the company Johannes Kalinish and Thibaut Clays so we will just welcome them in we'll pop over to Glasshütte and say hello welcome oh hi <laughs> That's that's better. Hi, uh, thanks for having us. Yeah, it's good to see you. It's very good to see you. And uh, my first question, just to get you know relaxed straight away. You know when you uh, you have many holidays in your life, and then you dream as you're working, you dream about moving and and leaving your holiday uh, place. Uh, and sometimes that that could spoil things in a way. So for you guys, you've been uh, you've been. Um, you know, uh, uh, you've been thinking, dreaming about creating your own watches. Now that is actually happening, are you stay still in holiday mood, or how is it? How is it going? We are definitely not in holiday <laughs> mood anymore. <laughs> um, I mean, when we come to work, we're we're quite relaxed. It feels like being at home. Um, it's it's a nice workshop we have. We're very happy to to be here um but we don't feel like we're on a holiday um it's quite the opposite we're um to be honest a bit stressed because we we put some pressure on, uh, on ourselves it's the first time that we're gonna present the watch to to the public um we've done it maybe in a different way than than most watchmakers we presented the render first and we'll come out with the watch later and I think for us both, this adds to the pressure because we, on the render, everything looks perfect. The sharp line is a sharp line. Um, and we we want to live up to the expectations that the people have. And that's why we're 
we're taking our time to to make everything that we're happy and yeah. we'll we'll see how everyone reacts when the when the watch is finished in the pure style we've seen now the founders edition of um of your first uh, of your first uh, piece of course uh, in the in the pure style the aesthetics how much of Johannes and how much of Thibaut uh, there is if you can sum it up in 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 any way and the aesthetics <laughs> i think <laughs> Uh, how much Tibu is in there is <laughs> close to close to zero. Um, the only yeah. thing I said was yes and no, or it doesn't look good. You and did then, quite more. You did quite more. And then Johannes got back to work. Um, <laughs> so I think Johannes can explain more on, yeah. the, on the design. So um, it was it was um, you know I I have a wonderful sister um, uh, like a twin, and um, she's like very creative, and um, me as well, and we. You know, we we talked about the watch and you know our idea that we want to you know create an own watch which is like kind of unique from the from the optic and um, so we we started with sketches you know on on paper and stuff like that like I think every watch uh, started and then we went further and further and after some months um, we created a beautiful piece in my opinion we have an a ring which is like the highest uh, level of, of like, you know of the surface then you go a little deeper you have a dark gray animal um, ring it's a transparent animal um, which covers um, a guillotte um, or like you can see actually in the picture um, a hand engraved um, dial which is just like 48 founders editions this is like hand engraved um it's a real yet relief engraving yeah. made by um by a local engraver here and then you go again a little deeper to the eccentric circle which is uh, also um, like hand engraved it's it's called tremblage and uh, on top you have um um you know a, a plate with our name on it and everything is finished by hand um, also, the animal is done in house here from from Tibo, yeah. and uh, the hands are finished by hand. Um, yeah, the plate, um, the tremblage, even the, the 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 circle, which is like the the border between the eccentric circle and the the at the gray animal. Even this have a nice polished chamfer, and um, yeah, that's basically it. So, so Johannes, yeah. Johannes is. Uh... Obviously, the the driving the creative the creative side, and uh, obviously the master watch making side. And uh, from your side, Thibaut, you're kind of uh, cross checking and kind of uh, giving your opinion, and uh, and also correcting and uh, and guiding uh, Johannes in a way. I'm I'm very interested in in knowing how how it works between you two. Exactly. Um, so in the beginning, I mean, we were two different people. We have two different characters, and um, it was it still is. The beginning of working together so johannes made some design ideas some um he started building the watch in uh, cat software and showed me some things and i was like wow ah, it doesn't look good then johannes asked me why for me design <laughs> i i don't want to say i have no interest in it because that's not true but i cannot explain so good why i don't like certain things so Johannes showed it to me. I said, no, I don't like it. And he asked me why. And then I'm sitting there. Yeah, I don't know. It's I just don't don't like it. And that was that, this was very often. So <laughs> yeah, so it was quite <laughs> difficult. Um, but then as time continued, I, I started um, seeing how Johannes uh, approached certain design ideas and um, you get in the same Frequency, yeah, frequency, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, and so I can see why he, why he made certain things the way they are, and I could um, take my 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 own ideas and say like, okay, you made a circle here, I don't like it, but can't you match it with the with the other circle going there? Um, and that's how, in the end, maybe my five percent of the design ideas. But, it's important. Um, it's actually. important, and and I guess it's very important that Johannes, you must not be defensive. So you are quite uh, humble and happy to kind of reconsider your 
your your ideas yeah definitely um if someone is like giving a critic uh to me and he's definitely doing it in a good way so um so then i i try to understand it i try to see um um you know what he's meaning and um what he what he tried to to um you know talk uh, say to me um on the other side i i'm like explaining myself to him so at the end so it was a kind of a very cool like, process and we we made a lot of experiences so and um yeah so we had a lot of uh design language you know with with uh like uh, this is like pushing upwards you know if, it, if you place for example a circle eccentric in another circle it giving a kind of direction and so I, I was talking in this kind of, of language and people, uh, Tibu on the beginning was like, huh, what, what are you talking about? So, so and, uh, you know, different other stuff uh, with the hands and uh, also with the, with the color of the, uh, of the circle. And um, we speak the, we spoke about different surface, um, for example, the tremblage or the guillage, and then we have a hammered, um, um, surface, which is unfortunately not, um, which you can't see so good on the rendering, but it was the plan from the beginning on that the the surface of of the blue of the blue ring is hammered, so it's not flat or like uh, matte or something like that. It's it's hammered and um, it gives um, a cool like let's call it a symphony between the um, rough surface in the eccentric circle that silver silver circle in the middle yeah then you have yeah. a flat flat polished like glass the the animal yeah, I would say and then on the outside again um, i think it's very clever because you're creating contrast instead of uh, with colors you're creating it with the finishing so the frosting if we can call it frosting a uh, hammering of yeah. the of the little circle actually uh, allows the the hands that are beautifully mirror polished to actually stand out in the way they do. So I I expect the the watch to be uh, perfectly uh, legible, and of course the pointers of the hands will be on the blue. So th there's no doubt about that. But it's an additional detail. Uh, I want to involve Johnny. Uh, Johnny, we've seen uh, we've seen the birds of uh, the births of quite a few independent watchmakers. Um, this this feels really exciting. We haven't even come to the orological side, the purely uh, engineering side related to the movement. And already, what's your take, Johnny? It, it feels like, um, of course, the all the old school te techniques uh, are very well uh, encrusted, you know, in what they, these two gentlemen want to do. But at the same time, the design language, the, the feeling of uh, of the piece itself is very contemporary. So what's what's your, what was your first feeling when you actually saw the watch? Well, I think what they've done, and what it actually, what the guys actually, just how they describe themselves is to say that they're capturing the classical essence of the sexually that uh, German watchmaking, but adding a distinctly contemporary and sporty accent to the, the finished product. And that is on the dial and also on the finishing of the movement and the the architecture of the movement so it is a very if i say mature timepiece for a couple of guys who are like these they're eminently well trained in uh, the watch it, it watch me both of them having worked uh at langer and son uh, for like, I, I guess you're only 24 years of age, yes, am I correct? No, a bit older. A bit uh, older. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I turned 31. Today. <laughs> Today. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Happy Amazing. birthday. <laughs> Alex Goodson, Geburtstag. <laughs> this can't be a coincidence. This can't be a coincidence. Happy birthday. Yeah. Thank bon compleanno. I'll add my language as well then, uh, Johnny. Thank okay, you. so you were what, 24 then when you left... The, or, or what, when you left Lange, or was that when you um, assumed uh, Johannes? That's when you became head of the department in in Lange. Yeah, I was I was uh, head of uh, the 
Lange One. So you had different kind of uh, departments, and I was head of Lange One. And um, um, yeah, I was I was working for Lange about nine years, and I started in 2013. And um, yeah, uh, nine years later, I I quit the job um, in 2022. It was about it was in April, I think, March, April, something like that, something like that. or May maybe. And um, yeah. you know, I, I was I was really not sure if I, <laughs> to be honest, if I would like um, still work on the watchmaking table. And um, you know, well, it was a kind of self uh, finding time and stuff like that. And then I think it was the year of um, it was the year of. Uh, the, the championship, football championship, yeah. I think. And there was a, a moment that Thibaut was sitting here and we knew, we knew each other um, from before. Um, we met in the company, of course, and um, he, was, he was talking um, also about animal dials because he was trying out um, while he was still working there. And um, I thought I could get my masterpiece with his um, animal dial, but it was not working. So um yeah and when we were sat there on the on the on the uh, football game he was talking like you know why why you why you don't start uh, your own company he had uh, my masterpiece in his hands and he was like you know i have cool machines and um, um so so he have cool machines <laughs> i have uh, i made a, already a watch so uh, why not starting something together and that was basically the the first point Start that we you know point. like mm -hmm. really thought about um building an own company mm -hmm. and growing it and um and if, I, if i can ask if i can ask how come that tibo had uh, the machines at that point in time um for me well i studied in belgium uh, in a watchmaking school and they didn't put much um I mean, the, the whole machining side of, of watchmaking wasn't really a big subject there. Um, was mainly servicing watches, um, but that wasn't really my interest in what I wanted to pursue in watchmaking. So I decided when I was doing my, my education in Belgium, I just bought all the machines um, or started like a, a little collection. I bought some machines, I sold some, bought a better one. Um, and that's how I basically build up to the machines that I that I needed to to make own parts because that was my main interest even as a hobby I came home from work from school um, and I started working on just trying out things um, gathering experience and was mainly a big interest of mine and that's how I got my assembly of, of machines um during the period of time um yeah he had the whole whole uh, apartment was full of in his kitchen there was a Schaublin 70. yeah so for, just the, for example the machines that we saw at the, um, in the atelier over there and in the introduction video was basically all standing in my in my apartment um amazing had, amazing had, so you yeah. you found out you were complementary in that sense and you were complementary because you worked together of course at the lange one department and a lange zone and then uh, he felt only natural at the end to do something together so uh yeah if it feels like a like a great story listen i have so many questions uh, first of all i wanted to recap what we're doing here we are the independents. We explore the world of independent watchmaking. And today we have a pair of independent watchmaker, watchmaker that got together a few uh, months, years ago, but they've not, never been really exposed. So today we have the privilege and the honor to be able to um, tell their story. Uh, if you like what you're seeing, um, let us know. I know there's many of you following our lives and this will be available also as a recorded version. So any question you may have, just put it in the comments here. We are reading your comments now, so thanks for the support. If you have questions you want to ask now, do it. We will, uh, we will pass them over. If you're watching these recorded, just send your questions in the comments and uh, we won't uh, fail to send them over to uh, Johannes and Thibault. Um, Johnny, we haven't even talked about, you know, the rest of the, of the specifications of this debut piece which came out in two 
format. So one special founder edition that was obviously, it, it functioned as a subscription for the early adopters, the early birds, and then 22 pieces that followed for a total of 30 pieces. We were lucky enough to just snatch one piece from for one of our collectors because these guys, believe it or not, they have nothing to sell at the moment. They're just working to produce what they promised. Uh, so can we go into the making a little bit more, Johnny, and show uh, if we have a um, layout of the of the yeah drawings and sketches of on the engineering side, um, Johannes, what was the idea? Uh, which kind of movement you want? You really wanted to have. What did you want to offer uh, from the mechanical and the finishing perspective? So yeah, um, what you can see here in the in the in the back or in the picture is um, the very very first beginning, like sketching the the movement. Um, my plan was doing a central second um, with an open gear train for the differential, so that you have. Um, somewhere on the watch um, the power reserve indication and of course um, the typical um, highly finishing standards of glass hütte which we were you know like we knew it um, so we wanted to have gold chatons um, natural um, uncoated um, german german silver plates blue screws and um, we mixed everything together. And um, this is, by the way, a sketch of my of my twin sister. And yeah, this is how everything started. So um, and amazing. Yeah. And um, I wanted to show a lot of the, of the movement because this is at the end what you know, I'm I'm very like interested in mechanics i like to see how they how they work and if you wind the watch you see all the gears running and stuff like that so um we have um like very open bridges with a lot of place to see what is under it um i mean it also means a lot of finishing <laughs> but um so that was the main idea central second um power surf indication you have a hacking mechanism so if you um pull out the crone you um you know, you can stop the, the balance wheel that you can set the time, um, you know, with a little, little question, Johannes. Uh, why German silver? Of course, German silver, you know, is made mainly of uh, copper, nickel and, and zinc. So, of course, nothing to do with the, with the silver uh, itself. But, uh, of course, it's become a signature for some watchmakers. And it's got this very intense warmth about it of color that creates contrasts that are quite different from the pure metal uh, silvery steel kind of metal so what, what was the intention there yeah i mean um it is uh, in my opinion one of the hardest um you know uh, materials you can work with because it's uncoated you have to be absolutely careful with um you know touching with your hands or this is not working um you will have fingerprints um for the rest of your life um it's really if you if you let uh, a bridge which you touch touch by your hand you you leave it like laying three four days um this fingerprint will never go away um uh, it's it's basically the material which is like very interesting um also a little challenging um because you have a lot of nickel inside so if you sometimes uh, ream a hole for example you want to have a you have a stone it's it's one millimeter in diam diameter uh, you want to press it in you should like do your um reamer the hole in the plate you should do it about 0 0.994 millimeters so within a thousand thousands of a millimeter and um that you that you have a nice you know press fit press yeah. something like that you know that the stone is not falling through and stuff like that and um so it's a kind of challenging because uh because of this nickel you sometimes ream a hole and it's 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 not the size it's sometimes smaller you know and sometimes the other way because um you're building small um let's call it mountains on on the on the tools and then the hole is getting bigger as it should be stuff like that so it's it's kind of challenging but um a challenge which we which we face and finally you know we got to a We're good proud. point <laughs> Yes. So was it was wow. it? Do you feel the German silver brings more? Um, how can I say? It enhances the finishing in a completely different way. 
yeah, definitely. definitely. Mm. Um, at least it's also the color, which is, in my opinion, absolutely beautiful. Yeah. And mm -hmm. um, together with golden chatons, uh, with polished uh, screws or blue screws, um, which we also use, um, it, it's a very cool com color combination. Um, and yeah, we also have an uh, engraving on the back. So the engraving is like covered with black um, rhodium. And um, so all the color combinations, this is also a thing for, for German silver. And um, yeah, at the end, it's which is also a big point is that we um, learned it from Arlang und Söder how to handle it. And um, yeah, it's it's not not everyone can do um, not everyone can do uh, can work with with German silver, um, especially the the uncoated one. So um, yeah, we wanted to do something special. Oh. Very cool. Yeah. So, and I interrupted you. So you were saying that also uh, you were already in mind the kind of uh, um, engineering tricks that you wanted to, to propose and features, uh, as well as the uh, different finishing techniques. Uh, sorry? So you said, you said uh, when I interrupted you about the German silver, you were telling the story about the, you know, the, the layout of the movement that you wanted to show at the yeah. back of the watch and the finishing that you wanted to apply. So if you want to yeah. um, carry on from that point. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah. So we wanted to, to show a lot of uh, mechanics open, um, which I like is the, the satellite gear train for the, um, yeah. for the power reserve ind indication. So you have basically uh, three wheels over each other. And on one wheel, there are two, no, three more wheels, which is which are there to, you know, change um, the direction of the gear train. Uh, it's kind of hard to to describe, so you should you should see it on the picture. But um, so we wanted to lay it open to 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 that everyone can see it um, if he looks on the back of the watch. And um, at the end, there were. You know the white stones we had a lot of conversations should yeah. we take uh, red stones or white stones but on from the design um perspective it's it's making the watch looking much more classic if you um if you take red stones and uh, so we decided to give a, a kind of modern touch um to the watch so um we decided to to take the white stones um it looks more flat, more modern. Um, the colors like appears a little better, um, especially from the German silver. And um, yeah, and then there was the shape of the of the plates, which was quite hard <laughs> because um, I, in this in this uh, moment or about this special topic, I was talking with my with my sister, and we were talking about you know direction of. Um, you know, of, of a flow or like a kind of power of movement. And um, if you sometimes look to a watch, you see that all the architecture of the plates are like having a direction, you know, it's like um, all fits together and, and nothing is like in the way. So <laughs> it's it's kind of hard to, to describe, I think, you know. So yeah, that was basically the... Um, the idea behind it. And then we had um, still a lot of thoughts about the power reserve indication. Yeah. And um, we decided to, to, to take another challenge to get the power reserve indication on the side of the case. Uh, in this moment, it was very cool to design everything and to, to get also the, the, you know, the calculations of the wheels and everything done and everything was working quite well. Um, but then later with manu with, with the manufacturing of the case, it, it was, um, it kind of, challenge. yeah, kind of uh, horror. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. We're, the, we're lucky that we found a case supplier who was able to, yeah. to make it for us. Um, because we had nightmares about the, the side glass, yeah. um, it was very, very difficult to find someone who is able to make the curved side glass. Um, in the quality that we want. Um, also, the whole case in itself is machined from one 
piece of metal so no welded lugs no screwed in lugs it's one solid piece of steel and they basically machine everything out of the case and you can see on the pictures that uh, the shape isn't one of the easiest yeah um they use they use small um end like mills. end mills uh, 0.3 like in the in diameter, in the diameter so like round end mills um, and that's how they get all the, the small intricate details of the case um, and that's something we're extremely great uh, grateful for to have um, amazing suppliers who can help us with realizing those those kinds of ideas that we have. So with your with your machining um, background, Thibaut, you had to work really side to side with uh, with uh, with the key suppliers. And can you clarify um, how much how much of these uh, um, um, of these ends uh, uh, central second will be actually um, in house, and how much is thanks to obviously the involvement of the key suppliers that you're probably managing um so i think the easiest way to say what we outsource is the case um that's the biggest most obvious part um we tried and started making all the bridges main plates in-house um but it wasn't manageable with our own cnc because it's i built the machine myself um and it was working up to a certain point but it's not productive at all and we felt some kind of pressure like hey we need to continue making the movement uh, making progress and buying um the parts with with the drawings that johannes made was just uh, the fastest way to to move forward um yeah because his his machine your machine just can work on one one played or one, one part, uh, part time. each time yeah, at um, a time yeah. yeah so it took a tremendous amount of time and it wasn't just worth the little thing of of making a cnc part by ourselves i mean it doesn't add that much value in the end it's it's still the machine that makes it um so we we uh, outsource that those parts as well um what we do in-house is gear cutting um which are quite a lot of gears that we have to make ourselves um levers that we make ourselves um for example this is one of our crown wheels um which i think we're proudly able to say that it's one of the the main highlights of the watch yeah um it's a tiny little wheel but it has so much detail it has yeah chapters on the teeth not just um a 45 degree um, but chamfers all around the deep, which we are able to do in house. It took a lot of um, research how how we were able to do it. Um, but we finally found a way how to do it reliable and and in a way that we're satisfied with it. Um, and then we had to design or develop tools that are able to to make um, circular graining, uh, other polishing of surfaces. So it's it's not just the wheel that you see, but it's it's design and development as well from from tools that are able to to give us the the design or the the want the, the finish that we want. Yeah. At the end, we of can say that we we do more than I don't know 60, 70 percent in house. Yes. Yeah. And we get, for example, some of the screws, um, you know, the, the small screws the for, the, small parts. for the bridge, um, pillars, pins and stuff. We, pins we, not, I turn them myself. Uh, some, <laughs> some pins not, that's right. Um, we, we get, for example, from, um, from another company, from, from a supplier. Um, but even even the we, we get the screws and they are not finished, so we have to finish them, we have to polish them, and then after it we blew them um, by hand. So this is, for example, a part which that's we, mesmerizing. Uh, Honestly, we take it for granted that when we and Johnny when we when we <laughs> obviously comment on watchmaking at this level, but look at that image; it tells you everything. Yeah. So it's, this uh, is this is for example the. Um, the bearing, the pushing, the yeah. pushing for um, the central second, it sits um, on the on the bottom of the shaft for the minute wheel. So you have the minute wheel. Um, this is like the minute wheel have a hole inside, and on the bottom of the shaft, so you have, on top you have the wheel. On the bottom of the shaft, you have a small um, bushing, which is like um, controlling the the central second, which is also going through the shaft. 
So uh, the central second um, shaft is about 0 0.2 millimeters in diameter, and it's about six, uh, yeah, 6.5 6 .9. or 6.9 .9 millimeters long. And um, so it's going through the whole minute wheel, um, yeah, to the central second hand. So, which is then on top mark. Oh, sorry, Johnny, you wanted to say anything? I, I just think it's remarkable, having worked through these images uh, today and yesterday, uh, that, that, as you said, Pietro, the, that, that image really does drive home just what we're talking about is nano engineering here. And uh, it's it's incredible, the precision. But then, uh, uh, Johannes, I think you have a reputation as being something of uh, obsessive about detail and you are not afraid to revisit something if it's not exactly to your satisfaction. I read about a second hand uh, in your your Meisterwerk piece uh, where there was an element of a tiny element of flutter in the second hand and that yeah. was absolutely unacceptable as far as you were concerned. So uh, that meant Whoop, pulling everything apart again and going in and remedying, that, that, finding a solution and remedying it. And I think that little anecdote kind of tells a lot about what the uh, Kalinish Clays is, is about now and what people can expect from a, a watch which is manufactured in your glass with the yeah, yeah. You know? it brings it brings a, a natural question as well. Are you ever happy? Um yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am I am happy, but I am you know I am a I'm a perfectionist and um I mean some people say perfectionists are never happy, but uh I'm definitely happy and um people's uh, people and I'm sorry, um Tibo is sometimes coming to me and you know we, we spoke um about the finishing of of a wheel um and he's like you know what i found out and i was like wow we should leave it like and like that and in this moment i would like to you know sample all the things because you can imagine how all the other parts will look and then come on let's do it together but no there's still a lot of work to do and we there's not just one part there's like about 140 parts which have to be finished and you know um so it's um I'm, I'm i'm very often happy and um but what we wanted to reach is that the customer can look into the movement or even on on the dial and the customer can see um you know this dedication to detail and you see all the angles and from every different perspective you see something working shining um even the, the the differential bridge which have this different uh, uh holes inside um which is covering the the differential gear train um it will be black polished and we already have a black polished one here and we just can't say it's yeah. absolutely amazing it looks very beautiful and we can't wait to 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 show it to the world and um so I just had a just had a question actually on is there any of this uh, fine finishing um between you know the tremblage the the beveling you know the graining uh, uh the brushing etc is there a signature that uh, is there an element that you recognize as your finishing signature for the for the future i think we'll have to find out in in the future i mean now we we try to put a mix of everything to show people that we're able to do what we lot. are able to yeah yeah um for example the the chamfers on the gears uh, the black polishing circular graining um it's it's basically i don't think there are many finishings left that are not into the watch um i mean still some but it, it all fits together perfectly now. And I think for future editions, we'll, we'll have to see what sticks and what basically fits to, to our brand. Um, for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
It, it, it's early days, isn't it? Uh, guys, uh, we're already at 40 minutes here. And uh, so I have a couple of questions that we've received during the conversation, which uh, I would like to r run past you. Uh, firstly, I think we maybe touched on this when we were looking at the, the sapphire glass for the power reserve or perhaps the, the chamfering of, of the teeth of the, the winding wheel. Uh, uh, Schmidt, Moritz, uh, Moritz Schmidt, what is the most challenging thing so far on Happy Birthday, by the way? I think it's it's difficult to pick one thing because yeah. uh, basically every week we, we find something new that we're breaking our heads over and think like, oh, how are we going to find a solution for that? And we think it's like basically game over. Uh, <laughs> but... <laughs> we after, after a couple of hours we find a solution and we're like oh okay it's it's actually quite all right to to do um or we find solutions that are even crazier um and it's it's perfect for us um for example we had a gear where we wanted to do basic circular graining but we couldn't go exactly onto the um, onto the shaft so it would have left out like a tiny little strip unfinished which you couldn't even see with the naked eye um, but it wasn't good enough for us so we decided to make a chamfer until the um, until the arbor and polish that arbor it gave us new challenges how to how to polish that chamfer because it's inside next to the arbor you have something in the way um, and in the end it, it's a part that we're every time we see it we think like oh we we need to build this watch together as soon as possible um because that will look amazing when the watch is completely completely finished um that's the same like johannes but, talked about yeah what we also can tell which is which, which was quite challenging was the animal itself yeah you know? so um we have a we have a um a fine silver you know plate um, which we which we mill this is, by the way, what we do with our machine still, exactly. and uh, we mill the the plate, and then yeah, and then you see it. It's you have the guillotine. So after milling the plate, you you bring the guillotine to it. We have a good friend; uh, he is making the guillotine for us. And then on on the guillotine, you place another ring because you don't want that the animal is going Frozen into the side. into yeah. the eccentric uh, circle. So you have to place an extra ring and then fill all the rest um, of the guillotine you fill with uh, with the like it's called it's a powder yeah. you know mixed it's with water with, mixed with water and the fact that the dial is open with the eccentric circle and quite thin um, also the silver is fine silver because it doesn't oxidize as much um, it all makes it warp extremely um so we had to find a couple of solutions to to minimize the warping and that took us quite some time to to realize and once we we found a way where we're extremely happy that it's um that it's working and we have those kind of problem with with a lot of parts uh, so it's difficult to pick one <laughs> yeah that's the watchmaker's job isn't it to find solutions to problems yeah. and uh, yeah. so it's uh, so but then that's what keeps you on your toes and makes it interesting if it was as they say here if it was easy everyone would be doing it you yeah. know so uh absolutely and Johnny, do you have a do you have the other question because i have a list another two so we have to stretch oh, right. this uh, yeah, broadcast yeah, yeah. a little bit longer for sure yeah uh tim has uh, sent us another question and that is is it a hard competition to exist between the big companies in glass -Hooter? Or do you have such a unique product that there is no competition? Um, it's uh, it's it hard to to exist between this. It's not hard. I mean, I there know. are some some companies, and we we heard very good. Like uh, th they were talking good about us, and they were quite happy that young people like like us that they try out. I mean, we are the very first. Um, I don't know in the history, but in the in the last in the recent history, uh, in the, recent history um, the first to do it like that and um, I think they're quite happy and it's it's in my opinion we get a lot of help uh, support yeah. Um, yeah. from other companies not that they they do work for us or something like that but 
if we have a question, we can call them. Um, we have like people who um, offers their help um, when it is about, for example, uh, shipping the watches. Um, we had a conversation uh, recently, you know, what, what you have to think about, you know, taxes and stuff like that. So we can, we get a lot of support with, with, um, yeah, knowledge and experience from other yeah, people. Yeah, we, we, we would find that quite regularly in independent watchmaking, that there's a, a great collaborative spirit. Um, yeah. There's a sharing of ideas, a sharing of know-how uh, that goes on. And uh, I would say in a town which is as famous, it is Germany's home of watchmaking, really, uh, Glasshood. Uh, it, it, it's but there's bound to be a kind of a cross pollination of ideas. And if you need assistance, or you need to find out, or you need to ask someone who is specialized in a particular detail, this is going to be someone there who will say, Well, if I was doing it, this is how I might go about it. And you, yeah, what you learn, we would call, um, ecosystem, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the ecosystem. So, if you, Pietro, if you've got a couple of questions, or I still have questions, but yeah. uh, we'll not get through them all. But if you'd like okay, to, let's, uh, let's, let's, do, got... let's do a few questions, as many as you have, as many as I have, and we do like uh, sharp and quick, quick answers. Okay, so we can keep this into the next five minutes and uh, and wrap it up together. It's obvious that we will have to do this again. So we will do this again, maybe in six months, uh, to because I had a, you know, this was my <laughs> list of questions <laughs> I couldn't even I couldn't even ask. So uh, I think we need to uh, give service to those people that have um, obviously ordered the first thirty pieces because again they all sold out. Um, uh, where are you with the with the manufacturing process and when people can expect to see the first pieces coming out? Um, so at the moment we're completely done with manufacturing parts. Um, it's completely up to finishing now. Uh, that's my main job at the moment, finishing as much parts as possible. Um, and yeah, and I'm assembling. I mean, yeah, I'm assembling at, at the all the parts. Time. Shafts, for example, pressing together with with wheels. Um, you know, uh, reaming till everything fits. So um, I think in one or two months. I mean, uh, now we, we made all the, the parts together and now we, we do it in, in 10 times steps. Yeah, so batches so, of 10 watches. Batches, um, yeah. So that okay. we can manage it a bit better. Exciting okay, times. so in the, in the next months, in the next months, uh, things could, could move. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Uh, when we receive our watch, of course, we will create, you know, all the video cover coverage that our collectors around the world would expect. And uh, hopefully we can look at the future with you guys. And the next question was, how is the future looking like? Do you have your next project in mind or too busy now to complete the work in hand? Um, no, at, I mean, we're, we're quite busy. Yeah? Um, but in the meantime, um, Johannes and I also worked on the on next watch, which will be based on the Einzer. Uh, so it will, has, it will have the same DNA um but it will have an added complication and that model is basically completely done um this time we will try to make a prototype as well so that <laughs> we won't have to show people renderings first and then build the watch um we will most likely be able to come out with a prototype uh, at the same time when we present the watch Fantastic. As, as, as your uh, retailers here in the UK, we can't wait to be able to, uh, to be part of that project. And we are very grateful for discovering you when it wasn't too late, in a way, to see the first answer, uh, which hopefully we'll receive soon. Uh, Johnny, any other quick questions? Uh, last question here I have uh, is from uh, your friend Marcus, by the sound of things, Johannes. He says, due to your success... Will there be free beer at the football <laughs> match on Friday? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Important yes. question. <laughs> we can't so which, put you on the spot there. So. <laughs> which team are you supporting so we can give the necessary love to your, to your, so to your football like, team? <laughs> this is more like, a, you know, like, a, uh, you know, I, I pl I'm playing with friends. There's no, like, a yeah. special team or so. We, we meet on <laughs> 
on Friday evening and then we would play some uh, soccer or football and then we, yeah. uh, we drink a beer, we enjoy a beer together. So <laughs> so um, I will definitely give <laughs> give beer the next time around. <laughs> it's no your problem. birthday and they should be buying you a beer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know how it works in Germany, but in Italy we are cursed because when it's your birthday, you buy beers to everyone else. Whereas in England, it's the other way around. When it's your birthday, everyone is buying beers to you. How is it in Germany and in Ireland? Um, especially, I mean, I Germany, mean in Germany, to, the same like in buy. Italy. Yeah. yeah, you have to, you have to, to bring buy. other ones, uh, you know, like yeah. a cake or, you know, beer or something to eat yeah. and stuff like that. So. Yeah. Johnny Island? What's the, Ireland, what's the look, in if, Ireland? If, if, if you get a pint, you're lucky. So uh, you just make sure you go out on your birthday and you, you've got enough in your pocket that you can afford to enjoy your night. <laughs> but don't rely on, on my friends anyway, let me tell you. So. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, listen, gentlemen, this has been an absolute pleasure. It's been a revelation as well. I think Johnny, you will uh, you will join me in saying that there's nothing that we enjoy better than actually discovering a hidden story and something that we can really bring to the many uh, the many people that watch these uh, these broadcasts. And thank you all because we are reaching 50, 50 subscribers. We started February last year. It's something that Johnny and I were not even uh, dreaming about. But the numbers are numbers is like the love that you show by by sticking to this broadcast and uh, you know watching all the way through our conversations it gives us a lot of energy and uh, the energy that we need to bring you the next story and then the next and then the next what is for sure is that Johannes and um, Thibault are on an incredible path and we will be privileged and grateful to be a part of it and give our contribution to uh, enhance what is a really genuinely uh, great story so uh, gentlemen, I really thank you for your time. I know how busy you are. And Johnny, thank you for organizing thing, uh, this for us today and with us. Thanks My for pleasure. having me. Yeah. Thank you. And, and guys, for me as well, it's been uh, a great uh, conversation to discover pretty much a, a, just the skim across the surface of what, what you're about, where you're from, and also to get a very clear indicator of where you're going and that is uh there's a lot of love for Kevin inch clays and uh yeah i think i speak for everyone watching <laughs> that uh, we all wish you the very very best of success going forward thanks thank you thanks thank uh, you all and uh, see you very soon on the limited edition take care